All right, hello all. Um, this week we're gonna start uh, salads, dressings, and dips. Uh, we'll probably do that for a couple weeks and then we'll get into uh, surface and then we'll be close to summer. So here, let me share screen with you guys. Do, do, do. We'll get going. Okay, <clears throat> so salads, dressings, and dips. Um, there's a lot to this, like you wouldn't think there is, but there really is a lot about salads, dressings, and dips. Um, we're going to go through it, like I said, for a couple weeks because it's going to have uh, a lot of stuff to go over. If I could get this to go. All right, so this is chapter 15 in the uh, first year culinary book. Um, Oh, let me move all my stuff down. Okay, so salads, there, there's a lot to salads nowadays. Um, it could be a single food, a mix of different foods, um, how it's held together, what type of dressings with it, if it's a main course, a side. Um, typically in like Europe, the salad, I know in America, we always serve salad first, but it's actually a digestif where the greens and the vegetables are help you actually process your food. So you would eat this after your meal. So if you had a fatty meal, like you had a lot of starch, a lot of, um, you know, animal fats, they had a big steak and some potatoes. You want to eat this afterwards because it'll go on top of the steak and potatoes in your stomach and the fibers from that help get rid of that stuff. Whereas if you eat it first, um, you're going to have, you know, it's not going to do that. It's just going to, you know, go through you before the steak. Eats. And then also, as far as the way these work. I know typically what you guys would think of for salad, like the salad we're going to do here is going to be, you know, greens with some ranch all over it. Typically what you want to do is serve these naturally. <clears throat> they taste they actually go better and help digest your food more if you have like the uh, vinegar and oil based dressing or like something acidic. Um, one helps break down the actual protein or the the fibers of the vegetables um, so you can process them easier um, and that way they're a more fibrous substance for you okay um, and it'll be less gassy as anybody knows if you've eaten raw broccoli before you will be burping that and uh, flatulating that uh, quite a bit so what vinegar does it helps break down the the fibers of the vegetables and help you digest them um, okay so starter salads, it could be an appetizer to a meal. They're typically smaller portions. They're not huge. Um, it's just to get kind of a palate cleanser, just to get a, a flavor in your mouth. Um, that's why you usually have some sort of fat on there um, with some sort of acid. Um, they're light, fresh, crisp ingredients, tangy, flavorful dressings, uh, small portions of protein. Like you don't want a salad this big and then a steak on top of it or a giant piece of chicken. And then like this says, it sets the tone for the rest of the meal. So depending, you'll use accompanying flavors. So say you did, say you're doing like a, a pork chop with like an apple cider glaze. You could also use some apple cider or apple slices in your salad, okay? Not necessarily saying you need to put bacon on something because you're eating a pork chop. That's not the complimentary thing. Um, it's more of a, you know, you're going to use apples for this, use some apples for this because you'll get that same flavor. Um, accompaniment salad, that could be, so another types of salads are in here are your brown salads. So like pasta salads, chicken salad, those are salads. So those are in this as well. So accompaniment salad is it accompanies what you're having for the meal. So you could get, you know, a side salad and like soup and sandwich combo or they're at the same time. That's what accompaniment means. It's like it's served at the same time and you eat them together. So a side salad served with the main course, light and flavorful and not too rich. It balances everything and complements the main course. Okay, then you have your main course salads. This is a giant Caesar with a mountain of cheese on top. Um, eggs are overcooked. So full meal, protein ingredients, well-balanced meal visually and nutritionally, um, variety of vegetable greens and or fruits. So this one looks decent. Um, it's all a presentation thing here. For me, this is a pre-tossed salad, so the dressing's already on it. Um, 
I like having everything. I know this is a, a pretty plate, but you have no dressing on any of this stuff out here. So you're just relying and hoping. And then that mountain of cheese is just overkill because you have more cheese than you do lettuce. So this is kind of a, I don't know, some people might like that, but none of this stuff is gonna have dressing on it. So it's gonna be a super dry salad just to critique what's on this. But you have so many different varieties now where people are doing full salads for um, a menu. And ironically, it's funny because a lot of people will go to like McDonald's in these places and be like, oh, I'll just get a salad because it's got a lot less calories. They put so much stuff in these now that a lot of times the salads at these restaurants have more calories than ordering a steak. So <clears throat> be careful what you get. Um, especially if you get a cream-based or a mayonnaise-based dressing. So, but they look great. And one of my favorite salads is a Caesar. I like salmon Caesars, chicken Caesar. I like shrimp Caesar, whatever you want to put on it, I'll eat it. Um, but I think the salad, the entree salads are kind of making a huge um, score for people, especially people who are going keto, vegan, um, these are, these are big ticket items and they want the same amount of stuff. So if you have somebody who is a vegan or vegetarian, they don't always want just like a plain bowl of lettuce. You know, they want some, <clears throat> they, they'll pay 15 or $20 for a salad. If you do something special there, you know, don't just plop a bunch of lettuce and give them a cup of ranch. Um, get some different varietal cheeses, get some heirloom tomatoes, like get, spend some money on what you're putting in the salad to make it more attractive and appealing. And that way you can charge a lot more money for it. Okay, intermezzo salad. I've never heard of intermezzo being considered a salad. Um, apparently they are in this book, but intermezzo is basically, it's called a palate cleanser. That's what this word right here is, it's palate. So say you have a big bowl of, you have a wedge salad for a first course where it's got blue cheese crumbles and dressing and bacon on there, your whole mouth is gonna be coated with fat. And the only thing you're gonna taste is that. So you wanna clean that out of your mouth so you have a fresh palate to try things. That's what this is. This is an ice cream. This is typically sorbet um, or granita, something that is a citrus-based ice sort of, because um, the citrus will just clean out your mouth. It's like sucking on a lemon. It's just gonna wipe everything out of your mouth. Um, a true example of this is <clears throat> when you wake up in the morning, if you drink apple juice or orange juice, it's going to taste extremely sweet because your mouth has a lot of protein and fat and stuff just in it from sleeping, and it tastes really, really good. If you brush your teeth and wash all of that out and have a clean palate and then drink orange juice, it's going to taste absolutely disgusting. So that's kind of the same thing that happens when you have a palate cleanser after a fatty meal. Um, French style, yeah, it stimulates appetite, very light, lightly acidic dressings, slightly acidic dressings. I'm not understanding. They just throw random stuff in there. Um, dessert salad. So <clears throat> sweet contains fruit, sweetened gelatins, nuts, cream, whipped cream, buffet service, family. So these are basically like your fruit salads. Um, they could be, uh, there's like ambrosia salad, those things where they toss in nuts and like honey and whipped cream kind of defeats the purpose of eating something fresh. Um, but yeah, just having this light fruit salad is, is another component. And then the dressing on this is probably like a strawberry marinade or something. <clears throat> but dessert salad is considered a salad too. Okay, so when you're buying salad, there's many components that you need to look for. Um, textures, uh, well, if you go to the store, kind of come up with an idea what you want to put in a salad first. Um, when you're shopping for lettuce, you can either buy fresh stuff, like on the head, only if you have, the only reason I would have somebody buy that is if they have a salad spinner at home. But if you buy like heads of romaine and you don't have a way to clean it properly, don't buy it because you can get salmonella super easy or E. coli. Um, be because of the poop that they put on the as fertilizer. If you can't wash it, don't buy it. Buy the bag stuff because that stuff is actually washed and you just need to rehydrate it. Um, <clears throat> so that's the difference. So if you buy the whole heads of lettuce, they need to be taken apart, 
cut up um, with a sharp knife, because if you use a dull knife, it's going to brown a lot faster or get one of those salad knives that's made of plastic. <clears throat> cut up your lettuce. Um, you want to soak it in ice water. The ice water will help crisp it up. Do not put bleach, do not put soap, do not put hot water. You want to use ice water, rinse it out. The salad will float to the top. The dirt usually goes to the bottom. You should do this twice. Rinse that, you know, drain it out um, and then go back. And then a salad spinner is literally like a, a basket with holes in it that fits inside a bowl. And it's, you know, it has a button on there and it spins really fast. And the force of that spinning around pushes all the water back out. That's the best way to do it. That's what they do with the lettuce that's already in a bag. So if you don't have the contraption, you don't want to take the time and you just want to eat and go, buy the bag stuff. Um, as far as the other ingredients in there, consider what you're gonna do. You know, there's a huge difference with um, buying, like say you want red peppers on something. Do you want cooked red peppers, roasted red peppers? Do you want fresh red peppers? What do you want? You know, is consider the different textures and flavors you're putting into your salad. Um, if you want nuts on there, if you want sliced almonds, you know, they have ones that are blanched, they have ones that are raw, they have ones that are toasted with honey. Um, you just really got to consider all these things together. It's amazing when somebody just comes up with a really good salad mix, uh, it, it transforms, you know, it's not like just your bucket of salad with some ranch all over it. Um, one of my favorite salads, a guy I used to work for, he had a Gruyere salad where he used Boston bib lettuce, only Boston bib, shaved Gruyere, and he did a red wine vinegar dressing with it, with mustard in it. I think it was Dijon. It was absolutely amazing. It was like one of my favorite salads ever. And it was just like five ingredients, but it was done properly. Um, and then like tomatoes, those kind of things. Only use things that'll taste good at that time of year. I honestly think tomatoes used at all um, in winter months in Indiana is disgusting. Unless you do like marinated tomatoes or um, uh, roasted tomatoes, something. Um, if you have tomato preserved, that's great. But tomatoes that tasted good originally, don't add funky tasting tomatoes to a salad right now just because you wanna put tomatoes on something. Um, use winter vegetables, you know, get some winter squash, you know, like a <clears throat> roasted butternut squash tossed in a salad is really good. So like these five things, freshness, consider freshness, flavor, and eye appeal. But whenever you're doing these, consider what the final dressing is gonna be, if you're gonna dress it, um, or you're gonna serve it with like some lemon wedges or lime wedges and olive oil, whatever you're gonna do. So traditional salad vegetables, celery, cucumber, fruit, mushrooms, peppers, tomatoes, root vegetables. Mushrooms is a key one too. Do you want fresh mushrooms on there or do you want a roast mushroom on there? You know, it all depends. Okay. As far as lettuces go, it kind of depends on what type of, you know, what kind of, what kind of salad you're trying to make. So um, arugula, this is a pungent, distinctive peppery, peppery flavor. Um, dandelion greens, like you can go in your yard, pull up the dandelion greens and eat them. They are, that's what they put in spring mix. So like the fancy lettuce you see at the grocery store that has dandelion greens in it. Um, this is another one called Belgium endive. This is kind of bitter, um, it says bitter but pleasant. So you'd serve this raw, um, we would serve it with something acidic. So you have bitter, you wanna put something a little uh, acidy with it. So we would maybe toss this with like blue cheese and uh, red wine vinegar and oil, um, or you, you fill this with like a uh, acidic, make like a dip and put it inside here because these are real strong and they're, you can pick them up. Um, butterhead lettuce, this is also butter lettuce, um, yeah, Boston lettuce, bib lettuce, a lot of people call it different things. These are the ones that they have hydroponic, so they'll grow, they'll grow these in a pool, like floating, so they're natural and they don't have a lot of dirt on them, and they'll, they're called living lettuce, so they'll, they'll pack it <clears throat> in a little bit of water, and it'll be alive when you buy it, so it's pretty fresh, probably one of my favorites. Um, and then just go back and look at these. Whenever you guys buy lettuce, the more flavor and the darker the color these things have, the more nutritional value it has as well. So looking at these three, escarole, endive, and crisp head lettuce, this is just, I don't know why they call this crisp head. This is a uh, iceberg lettuce, but crisp head is the new word, I guess. Um, this one probably has the most amount of nutrients because of the dark color of it. 
the flavors in there. Um, escarole, it does have a strong bitterness flavor to it, but it's good in salads. Um, a lot of these you can cook, like marinate them and grill them because they're a lot more firm. Um, chicory, this is a, a salad. We use, my grandmother uses this, also called curly endive. Um, she uses this in her soup. She'll chop it up <clears throat> and put it in soup and it gives it a, a distinctive flavor. This is probably the most popular lettuce of all. This is just head lettuce, um, also called iceberg. Really no nutritional value at all. It has a lot of water in there. So, you know, you get the water content. Um, cabbage, this would be coleslaw lettuce. Kale is another type of lettuce, salad green. Um, baby kale is best for um, salads. These bigger pieces, you'd almost wanna like blanch it or chop it up real fine because it's hard to process and break down. Do not put this, this, the vein, the stem in here because you won't be able to chew through that. Um, leaf lettuce, great for sandwiches because of the, uh, the it's solid texture, um, easy to cut up and they have green and red leaf. Uh, microgreens, these are baby lettuces. Um, really good, they do microgreens as far as um, lettuce blends and then they also do a lot of herbs so like micro basil micro uh, cilantro stuff like that and it just does a really light textured pop when you when you put it on top and you just serve these raw different cabbages uh, radicchio this is called leaf chicory italian chicory um, adds color it actually has a really good flavor and this grills beautifully like <clears throat> if you go to italy they will serve you a steak Everything's all coursed, all a cart. So they'll cut this into quarters, marinate it in a uh, dressing of their choosing, and put it right on the grill. And it gets, it's, it's bitter at first, but then it gets this really good uh, texture and flavor. Um, you get the char on there, um, and then it cooks through really nice and it adds a great flavor with your steak. More cabbages. Um, this is a traditional one, it's red cabbage. You'll see shredded in the bags of lettuce, um, romaine. Same thing. This is typically a lot of times will serve the heart of romaine. So they'll peel off these outer leaves, which actually have all the nutrition in them and serve you the little baby part in the middle that's more tender. Um, Savoy cabbage, another type of cabbage. All cabbages, honestly, have different textures. So some can be eaten raw. Some can be, you just marinate lightly. So like coleslaws, some of them you need to cook, cook quite a bit. So, um, <clears throat> depending on which one it is. Uh, sorrel, another one of my, you know, favorite lettuces, you know, depending on what you're putting it with. And you just mix these up. So you could put sorrel, so this one's slightly acidic and bitter flavor, put it with some baby spinach and watercress, because this has, this is peppery, but it's not spicy, or it's not like bitter. So you can mix these three things together. That's typically what a spring mix is, or fancy mix at the grocery store. Spinach, um, depending on what kind it is. Baby spinach is great for salads. If you want to cook it, don't spend the money on baby spinach to cook. Just buy the curly spinach, which is the big, big broadleaf spinach. It cooks a lot better and holds up texture wise. All right, so let's go through, let me see what we got here. Yeah, we'll start with these uh, different types of salads. That way you guys can see um, what are the different types of salads? And we'll probably stop here and then we'll continue on tomorrow with um, different types, you know, salads from around the world. And then we're gonna get into dips and um, other things next week. So the salad, you have the first part of it is the base. So that would be the layer of salad greens. So say if you went to an all-you-can-eat buffet, you get your plate, you plop on your lettuce, okay? That is your base. The body, um, is the mixture of all the other stuff up top. So your main ingredients, so the mixture of vegetables, whatever meat you choose, cheese, fruit, um, dressing, oh, I'm sorry, mayonnaise-based salad. The body of that would be a bound salad, which would be your like thin salad. But anywho, so you got the body, which is like all the toppings. Dressing would be, um, could be, you know, from a vinaigrette to lemon juice to olive oil, um, it depends on what it is. So holds the salad together, it seasons it, flavors it. Cold sauces to flavor, moisten, and enrich. Um, yeah, so green and vegetable salads, tartar sour dressings, fruit salads, sweet dressings, mix ahead plate and service. I don't know why they 
this is like a horrible thing on here. Um, so the garnish for these, as far as garnish goes for salads, you want something that complements and then adds texture. So a garnish for a salad would be like a bacon bit or <clears throat> some crispy fried onions or fried wontons crushed or tortilla chips or something to add like a crunch, a salt, maybe some acidic. Um, if you did some like chopped up craisins or you know some sun-dried tomatoes as your garnet, I don't know, it depends on what you're doing. Um, croutons, crostini, there's all kinds of garnishes you could do, but you always wanna do something that's gonna complement the flavor of the salad and then add like another level of texture. Okay, so these are the different types of salads. Let me see what time we got. Um, the types of salads, you have your green salad, which could be tossed or composed. Toss salad is where they just send you the, the raw ingredients and you put the dressing on. Composed is where they mix it for you. A bound salad is your like, <clears throat> that would be anything bound together. That's what bound salad means. So like chicken mixed with mayonnaise, that is a bound salad. Okay, so those are your pre-mixed salads. Um, usually a meat, a protein or a vegetable. Um, vegetable salad, fruit salad, and then combination of the, you know, all four of these. All right, so green salad, like I said, mixed. Um, composed, do not toss the salad together. Yeah, so it's mainly you're going for like a lot of good visual textures, colors, um, and then plate presentation on it. Height, a bound salad is like this, where it's from cooked ingredients or raw. You could do like raw broccoli salad and they're bound together with a heavy dressing. Sometimes they're a light dressing. Sometimes it might be a pasta salad with like an Italian vinaigrette on it, just depends. Um, veggie salad could be, you know, like your coleslaws from cooked or raw vegetables, heavy or light dressing, depends on what you wanna do. I've had vinegar slaw and I've had like mayonnaise slaw. I like both. Fruit salad, um, slightly sweet or sour dressing, uh, handle fruit the carefully so it doesn't break down. You want whole pieces of fruit, you don't want smashed. And then, um, yes, prepare these close to service so they don't turn. Um, the more you have these, like say you have a fruit salad and you have like a vinegary dressing you're putting on there because vinegar, vinegar goes great with fruit, but the vinegar will break down the fruit. So you don't want to toss that too ahead of time because it'll be like a bowl of soup. Okay, and this is the combination. So. This is like choosing your different salads and putting them on a plate. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're gonna stop there for a sec um, and we'll continue on probably tomorrow. But basically what this is, with the salads guys, it just depends on what you wanna do with it. Um, restaurants typically will have your side salads. They'll try to do more, they'll have entree salads as well. Um, for your house, you know, it's always good to have some sort of green on the table. I've tried doing that at my house. It doesn't, it's not all that successful, but just having the bowl of mixed greens on the table, maybe toss some things in there. That way people, if they see it, they might <clears throat> start to be like, oh, okay, you know, I'll have a little salad um, with my dinner. So it's a good way to incorporate vegetables and it's a good way to get rid of things in your fridge. So if you have carrots one night um, or you buy a bag of carrots, you can serve cooked carrots, you can do shredded carrots, you can have carrots mixed in a salad, um, asparagus, you know, all that's artichoke hearts. It's a good way for people to try new vegetables and fruits and stuff that they would not normally try because you can just add a little bit to a salad and just give a different flavor. Same thing with zucchini and squash. Like there's a picture of grilled zucchini on here. A lot of people don't like that or don't like zucchini as is, but if you grill it and then chill it and then just slice it really thin and then put it into a salad, they might not even know that they're eating it and they're like, oh, that's pretty good. Um, same thing with like pickled vegetables, you know, like pickled cucumbers, pickled asparagus, stuff like that. You get that tarty crunch to it. I've used um, <clears throat> like the banana pepper juice. I've used that to make salad dressings before, you know, because it's vinegar and it has a really good flavor to it already. So just add stuff to it, you know, then use the, the peppers for the salad. So we'll continue on with salads. Um, we're going to go over like salads internationally. And then we'll get into dips because that's just another huge one. And I want to show you guys a couple of videos on how to make these different dressings as well. And maybe some history with them, um, some history of salads. And then, uh, yeah, we'll keep going. All right, you guys have a wonderful.